हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल आइकन को दबाएं ताकि आप देख सकें हमारी हर आने वाली वीडियो को सबसे पहले إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد بعد الجود والكرم من بين علم والهلم والهكم صلاة وسلام عليك يا رسول الله صلاة وسلام عليك يا حبيب الله صلاة وسلام عليك يا رحمة للعالمين الحمد لله we are celebrating 50 years of this Jamia. I question why I was asked to say a few words in English. And until today, I was still asking that question. Because we are in a small town in India where the percentage of people who understand English is very small. And yet I was asked, not a teacher, not a college teacher, not a lecturer, but someone who practices law in English, in England, where the English language has a high status. And this was very questioning for me. Until today, earlier in the morning, I was in a car with Molana Khalid and the question arose about why this town was called Ronahi. And Molana Khalid states that I believe some people say that it's called Norahi. And so, the explanation that was given is that in Urdu, no rahi meaning nine rastes, nine roads. Those who understood Urdu were taking this to mean nine roads going in or out of Ronai. Those who understood, understood English they understood to say no rahi, no roads that go to Ronai. And this made me think how far we are in our understanding of English and Urdu. And it made me think further. When you look back over a century, a hundred years, 200 years and you realize the advancement of technology advancement of medicine advancement of psychology advancement of every field of academia you will find no muslims there how far has mankind advanced at one time muslims used to dream about flying like a bird and now muslims fly in planes helicopters rockets how far man has advanced, but Muslims have nothing to do with that advancement. There was a time when Muslims used to cut the body open to see what was wrong with him. Because he was ill. He had a disease. They had to cut the body open to see what was wrong with him so that they could cure him. Now, you can place a body in a machine and it will scan you. CT scan, MRI scan, this scan, that scan, and it will tell you what the problem is. How mankind has advanced, but Muslims have nothing to do with this. There was a time when Muslims used to write letters to their loved ones, this town, that town, and it used to take weeks for the letter to come and the letter to go. And those who remember, they would wait patiently to see the letter. What have they written? There was an aspiration, there was passion, there was desire. Now, 
mankind simply presses a button on his phone and the message is received or sent instantly. How mankind has advanced, yet Muslims have nothing to do with this. And the advancement is continuing. They're now talking about cars that move by themselves, that run on electric, not diesel, not fuel. They're talking about developing clothes that heat themselves and air condition themselves. They're talking about glasses that have the ability to identify the names and locations of different places. This is all going to come in the next 10, 20 years. How far mankind is advancing, but Muslims have nothing to do with this. Why? If you look at the education system, you will see two different aspects. The education of religion and the education of secular education, secular knowledge. There is a distinction, there is knowledge which has been ripped apart. This wasn't the case before. History, if you read, Muslims were ulama, but they were also doctors. Muslims were barristers and lawyers, but they were also ulama. Muslims were learning and teaching about astronomy, but they were also ulama. But what has happened in the last hundred years is that we have remained and kept knowledge just within the deen. And this is a sad reality that we live in. And I realize that one of the reasons for this is that education and knowledge in life, in dunya, is advancing in English only. It is not advancing in any other languages. 70-80% of the world speaks English. And we are highly educated in Urdu. And Urdu, in my opinion, is the best language in the world. But we have to be realistic. We have to be able to teach the youth to advance in English as well as Urdu. There is no compromise. Because if we not do this, we will be one zilla who understands Urdu and the rest of the world has moved on. We will be a society that doesn't care about Islam. The rest of the society do not understand Islam. Islam will be a small place. And so one of the lessons that I've learned, and it is a fikhi thought, it's a fikri thought, it is a thought that is long term, that the Jamia needs to introduce English, and it needs to teach secular education as well as Dini education. So that our future children, ulama, specialize in secular education, in medicine, in astronomy, in the sciences, in law, in psychology, in physiology, as well as the alim. Every single alim should have a specialization that he should be an expert in. This is the future of where the Jamia ought to be. On this 50th anniversary, it is a blessing and a privilege to be in such a respected place. A place that if you were to mention in America, in Canada, in the United Kingdom, they will stand up and they will give you respect. Because the person who has introduced Ronahi, this Jamia, is Hazrat Mufakkar Islam. And he has a credibility, a standing. And I guarantee you this to all the ulama. If whenever they get a chance to go outside India, mention where you are from to anyone who is Sunni. And the first thing they will tell you, and they will refer you to Hazrat Mufakkar Islam. There is a strong connection. They may not know Ronahi, they may not know Jamia, but as soon as you mention Hazrat Mufakir Islam that you will be respected, they will hug you. 
they will show you Izzat. Because there is that strong connection. Use this. Advance yourself. Take yourself and elevate yourself where you need to be. Use this opportunity to move forward.